everyone, welcome back to another episode of Virtual Mosey. My name is Jose, and this is Field Trip Friday. Now, throughout this week, we've been learning all about anatomy. We've been uh, talking about the musculoskeletal system. We even did some uh, dissections, and it's a lot of cool things. But, you know, it's always good to have a balanced workout. And even though you can stay fit and stay healthy, you want to make sure you also exercise your brain. So behind me, I've actually got our brain teaser section. It's called Strain Your Brain. And today we're going to go through a few of these uh, puzzles to all of these puzzles. So let's go ahead and start with an easy one. And I think it's easy, but that's because I like math. This right here is literally called easy math. And it's a fairly straightforward puzzle. You'll notice that all we have to do is arrange the pieces to form the following incorrect equation. Uh, it's incorrect because we know that 1 minus 3 does not equal to 2, okay? And then our challenge, our goal, is to only move one piece to make this incorrect equation be actually correct. So that's a bit of a challenge. Uh, now, there are several answers to this particular puzzle. Uh, depending on which piece you select, uh, you might have to uh, move it somewhere different. But let's take a look. So we have 1 minus 3 equals 2. And that's not right. So what can we do? Well, we could actually take one of the pieces from the equal sign and move it to where we had the minus sign. And now if we read it, it says 1 is equal to 3 minus 2. So we've only moved one piece, and we've changed from an incorrect equation to a perfectly valid statement. So that's pretty cool. I'll put that one back, and I'll show you another one that I like. Uh, this one's for those of you more advanced math users up there. So instead of having 1 minus 3 equaling 2, we can actually take the 1 that's up in the front here, and we can place it over the equal sign. And now it says negative 3 does not equal 2 which is also correct. We know that minus 3 does not equal to 2. So there you have it, some quick and easy math that is sure to uh, get your brain uh, thinking about creative strategies to solve the simple puzzle. Now, moving on with this particular um, section of Strain Your Brain, we also have this puzzle right here. Now, this one's called Highball, and as you can see, we've got two marbles that are inside this contraption here. And ultimately, what we want is to have each marble stay on the sides here. And we want one marble on one end and another marble in the other end. The only problem is, once you have one marble, if you try to tilt it to get the other marble in place, the opposite marble falls. Now, we could try flipping it upside down and then being really, really, really careful and trying to see if we can't get the marbles on either sides there. But as you can see, I'm having a really, really hard time uh, getting these marbles to go in place. Now, if you know the answer to this in the comments, be sure to let us know. I also know the answer, uh, and I'll share it with you guys before the end. But I'm going to go ahead and put highball back uh, on the table here and encourage you guys to post some questions. Uh, maybe if you have the answer or have some suggestions to some of the solutions, let us know in the comments and then we'll get through them. Uh, let's go ahead and move on this way now. As you can see, uh, we now have all of these other puzzles. Uh, this one is actually pretty, pretty fun to work with. It's called You've Got My Number. Now, essentially, if we arrange the pieces in the manner depicted, um, there's 15 pieces, and we can count them real quick. We have 3, 5, 3, 5, that's 10, and then 3 and 5, that's 15 pieces altogether. And the challenge is to remove 6 pieces and leave 10. Remove 6 pieces from 15 and leave 10. If you're good with math, you know that 15 minus 6 does not equal 10. So how are we going to do this? Well, let me try. So I'm going to take 1, 2, 
three, four, five, and six. Okay, so I took away six pieces and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Huh, that's not 10. Okay, let me reset this. I'll try one more thing. So put these back how they started. So take away six pieces and leave 10. The trick to this one, if you've been wondering, is we don't really want to leave the number 10, but instead, watch this. We're gonna take one, two, three pieces, four pieces, five, six pieces, and now I've got six pieces that I've reduced from our original 15, and now I have left 10. So remove six and leave 10, Again, messing with you. So I hope you guys have been having fun so far. I'm definitely enjoying these puzzles. Uh, again, we have a lot of puzzles here at the museum. Uh, it is absolutely uh, imperative that you keep your mind sharp, uh, especially as you get older. You want to make sure that you're able to uh, think things through and uh, have this you know, cognitive awareness. And doing brain teasers or Sudoku puzzles, or if you're like me and you like Rubik's Cubes, playing with those is always a lot of fun to keeping your mind agile. Now it's time for a word puzzle. Uh, so let's go ahead and think this one through. Let's pretend that we are in a race. We're running in a race and you just passed the person in second place. What place are you in right now? Think that through. You're running in a race and you just passed the person in second place. What place are you in right now? Hmm. If you're thinking, oh, I just passed a sec uh, person in second place, I have to be first, think and slow down. You just passed the person in second place, which means you now took their spot. So you're in second place, person who was in second is now third place. You're not in first place, you gotta pass the person in first to be first. So again, it's those simple uh, puzzles to help keep you and your mind active. Now let's continue with some of our puzzles over here. Uh, we have some on this particular side which are more oriented to creating things uh, physically. So we have some 3D and some 2D puzzles. This one here is probably the easiest of the 2D puzzles. It is called the heart tangram. And essentially we have these pieces here. As you can see we have six, we have nine pieces and all together we want to create a heart. Now we've gone ahead and given you kind of the uh, mold right here. So this is where all the pieces will fit to create a lovely heart shape. Now it's time for us to try it out. Now I know that as we're making a heart, it's probably going to end up having curved edges all on the same side. So I'm gonna take the curved pieces and I'll put those on the tangram puzzle first. So as you can see, I now have both curved edges, and that's really gonna help me figure out the rest of the puzzle. Now, I notice that this top part here kind of looks a bit like a square. So I'm going to push a square right up on top. Now I have three pieces that somehow need to fit inside these spaces. Now if I do this wrong, chances are these pieces will not fit. So let's take a look and see what can happen. So I'm gonna take this piece here, this parallelogram, and I'm gonna try and find out how best to orient it. Because right now, it doesn't look like there's any good place for me to put it unless it sat right there. As you can see, I've got two spaces left, one of which looks a lot like this trapezoid, and the other looks a lot like my triangle. And as you can see, we've now gone ahead and made a heart. So this is pretty fun. Uh, let's, keep it, let's kick it up a notch and let's make a full 3D object. So once you follow me over here, we're now going to create what is called a Soma Cube. Now, this Soma Cube, is cons it consists of seven main pieces. As you can see, there are only seven pieces here on the table and there's over 240 different solutions to it. We just have to see if I'm lucky enough to find just one solution. Uh, this is actually a very tricky puzzle if you don't know what you're doing or maybe you have
different ideas that you want to try every time. For example, right now, you'll notice that I apparently have solved the puzzle. Okay, so lucky shot. Um, the real answer is I've been doing this one for a long time. But if I try any other solution other than the one that I know, um, it can be very, very tricky. So let's try something that I know is probably not going to work. If you watch closely, there's a lot of these tiny gaps uh, where it is only one space across. So to try and fill those tiny gaps is going to be very tough without leaving uh, a hole in the side of the cube. So this is probably one solution that is most likely not going to work. Uh, I'm gonna have to switch things up kind of like that. And what do you know, I solved it again. Bam! Okay, so being able to visualize things in three dimensions is definitely uh, something that takes some time to learn, some time to master, um, but it can be a lot of fun and it can help you out if you're doing home improvement projects. Fun fact. Now, let's move on to one that's a little bit more logic based and it happens to be this one right here. Now, let's go ahead and read the instructions for this. It says, farmer, duck, fox and corn. We want the boat to cross the river. Uh, it only holds the farmer and one other item. If the duck is left with the sack of corn, the duck will eat the corn. And if the fox is left with the duck, then the fox will eat the duck. So our challenge is really to do the following. We want to have all of our uh, family members here, which consist of the farmer, the fox, the duck, and the corn, we want them to go from one edge of the riverbank on the boat to the other side. So if I go ahead and take the fox, we have a problem because the duck can eat the corn. Okay, so we can't do that. Um, if I take the corn, then we have another problem because the fox can eat the duck. Okay, so, hmm, thinking that through, there's really only one uh, solution here, and that, of course, is to take the duck, because the fox doesn't really like corn. So the corn's gonna stay behind. Now I can leave the fox over there, I can come back. And uh, what should I take next? Well, really, uh, you can kind of pick. I'm gonna grab the fox, let's see what happens. So if I grab the fox over and I try to come back, uh-oh, now the fox is gonna eat the duck. So, maybe that was a mistake, okay. I'll grab the fox, I'll bring him back, and I'll take the corn instead. I'm gonna go ahead, take the corn back to the duck, and if I leave, we have a problem again because the duck can eat the corn. So what is our solution? Well, it turns out, all you really have to do is bring the duck back with you and then take the corn back to the fox or if you took the corn first, take the fox back to the other side and then you can leave and bring the duck last. Essentially, the way it works is as follows. You want to take the duck first, grab any one of the other two bring the duck back, and ultimately the duck will be the last one to cross over to the other side. So again, this one's a little bit more logic based because one can eat the other. Uh, so this one you have to think a little bit more. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to one final uh, tangram puzzle, which is this one uh, right here. Now this one's, oh, we have a question, yes. Oh, a comet, lovely. You can put the duck in the water. We can also try to put the duck in the water because it can swim as long as the current is not uh, too swift. Uh, so that's a great point. Uh, the duck, in theory, can also fly over, so he doesn't really need us. Um, but, you know, it's all logic-based, but I like that comment. Way to think outside the boat or box. Now, let's go ahead and uh, try the square tangram here. This one, again, consists of seven pieces, and what we want to do is really just make a lovely square. Now, tangrams are a lot of fun because you can actually make several different shapes that are not necessarily uh, squares, and uh, hopefully you'll see what I mean in just a brief moment. I'm going to go ahead and 
take our lovely seven pieces, and if you watch closely, I have actually, oops, oh, that foot looks broken. That looks better. Uh, I've made a little running person. Ta-da! But that's not what we want. We want it to be a square. So for this one, I would recommend you start off with the two largest pieces. Bam, I made a square. Obviously, that's not what we want. We want to use all the pieces. Otherwise, we would have two tiny squares, and that's it. So let's take the two big pieces, and this will be one half of our square. If you want to think of this kind of like a sandwich, and then you slice it in half so that you have a lovely diagonal sandwich, this is what we have just formed. The next step will be to place our square, which is going to go somewhere near the very center point. So I'm gonna place it there. I will then take my tiny triangle on this side and my large triangle on that side. And as you can see, I'm starting to fill up a square shape. So really all we had to do was figure out how to get these five pieces to make the other half of our sandwich or of our square. So that's pretty straightforward, but again, uh, it's only really gonna work if you sit there and you think about it and you go from there, okay? So that's a lot of fun. Let's move on to 14 on one. 14 on one is actually a puzzle that a lot of our guests struggle with and it's actually quite simple to solve if you've got the right technique. So let's take a quick look. It says we want to balance all of these, all of these 14 nails, we wanna balance them on just the one nail here. So we've gone ahead and done the hard part for you, which is having a nice, sturdy nail as your base. Now, I can sit here and I could try to balance one. I got one, that's pretty good. Uh, let's see if I can balance another one. Ooh, it's getting tough, getting challenging here. Now, obviously there has to be an easier way and there is an easier way. I'll share it with you in just a split second. As you can see, it's very tough to balance these like that. It can even fall over. So let's show you what the answer to this is. The first thing I would do is I would actually place one nail on the table as such. And then the next thing is really to repeat the following pattern. You wanna take a nail and place it perpendicular to that one so it makes a 90 degree angle. And you wanna make sure that the next nail that follows is facing the opposite way. So if you focus on the nail heads, you want them to alternate which way they are facing. And you're gonna repeat this pattern uh, several times until you are left with just one nail that uh, doesn't really fit anywhere. And I'll show you what that looks like. So we have our lovely pattern here. And if we count, we've got two, four, six nails on that side, and we have two, four, six nails on this side. If I took this nail and put it anywhere, it would make that side uneven. So it would be unstable if this one nail weren't to either end. So instead, we're gonna take this nail and we're gonna actually place it on top across the other nails. So it's really going to serve as our um, support here. So we're gonna lock these in place essentially by using these two nails. Now, using these two nails in particular, you can have the following pattern, okay? So it looks like the nails themselves are uh, actually supporting one another. Oh, one of them fell, that's okay. That just means we need straighter nails for this one. Uh, but as you can see, this is the technique to where you can have all 14 nails balancing on just the one nail so that not a whole lot of them touch the table. So that's actually pretty cool. And I'll be honest, this one I actually had to look up the answer to many years ago when I first saw the puzzle because I kept trying to make triangles that would somehow balance on the one nail. It I did not have the patience to try it, but you guys are lucky because now I'm showing you what to do to get the right answer. And then when you come back to Mosey and visit with your friends, you can show them the right answer and impress them with your skills. 
There we go. So that's pretty straightforward. Now we come to one of the toughest ones here at the museum. We call it peg a peg. Um, really, it is a jumping peg puzzle. And you might have actually tried this if you've ever gone to some restaurants that they have this uh, kind of while you're waiting for your food to arrive. Essentially, you want to start off with um, the entire board here filled with pegs except for one peg that is missing. There's a hole right there, uh, so we have a missing peg. And the rules are pretty straightforward. Um, you can actually jump a peg over another peg as long as there's a hole uh, on the opposite side. So I can take my peg here and jump over this one. Since I jumped over it, I can remove it. And then we can continue this pattern as you can see. Uh, and then the ultimate goal is to only leave one peg on the actual board. So we're gonna go ahead and see if by following that technique, if by following that uh, pattern, those rules, we can go ahead and leave just the one peg behind. Now, earlier, I actually had uh, one of my coworkers share some hints and some tips and some secrets, and that is why I have accidentally uh, left two pegs behind, because I tried to talk and go through it. But let me share those hints and tips and secrets with you guys. I forgot to remove one. I forgot to remove one at one point. Ah, see, okay. So this is why sometimes talking while solving puzzles can be distracting. But I'll show you guys what he shared with me and we'll go from there. So the first step is you really only have two options. You move one of these two. I'm gonna choose this one just because uh, it makes life simple. And then you want to jump over this particular peg here. And now you have kind of three locations where pegs can go. The way my coworker explained, you really want to bring two rows down. So we're gonna jump this one and this one. And now everything is nice and clumped together on this side, except for the left-hand side here, that entire edge looks a little messy. So we gotta clean it up a little bit. We're gonna jump that peg, jump this peg, good. That's looking nice and neat. Now we have our lovely clump here, and what we wanna do is we wanna make a, a nice uh, chevron, a nice V-shape here. The only way to do that is by using the corner peg, placing it there. So now we have a V-shape, and what we can do is essentially what I did before, except I'll remember to remove all the pegs this time. We will jump over this middle peg, and we'll replenish that peg that we just had. There it goes. Uh, so I'll jump over it, there we go. We'll replenish it. There we are. And as you could see, when I jump over it, we now have the one peg. So kudos to my coworker for sharing that with me. Uh, because again, some of these are very, very tough. And this one, I definitely had a hard time doing it. Um, I solved it once by accident, and I don't remember what I did. So now that I have uh, kind of that technique down, and hopefully you got it down too, then it makes it a whole lot simpler. Uh, there's a pun in there somewhere for those of you who will enjoy that kind of thing. So that's a few puzzles that we have here at the museum. Um, let's go back to Highball. I do want to share the final answer with you guys. So I'm going to sneak behind the camera and see if there's any questions. Oh, go ahead. One question we have is, do you know any other ways to solve the nails? Do I know of any other ways to solve the nails? I have seen uh, some of our guests actually um, make a square frame with some of the nails and then using kind of like a truss system in the center and trying to balance that. But it is very, very tricky to do. And again, you want very straight nails. Um, so I have not seen that work successfully in person, but I'm sure that there are other techniques that you might be able to implement. And that's the beauty of puzzles. Sometimes there's a multitude of answers that you you can try. Um, but yeah, great question. Thank you. And now going back to our highball game here. So hopefully you recall from the beginning that we want one of these marbles on either end. If we tip it upside down, it becomes very hard to do so. We can get one of the marbles in there, no problem. But the other one, mm, that one becomes a challenge. So if no one in the comments has shared the answer, I'll go ahead and take it upon myself to give you the answer, okay? We had, we had someone say it's 
to spin it. Look at that. That is the correct answer. So I like to tell people uh, to think about twisters and tornadoes and ballerinas, uh, figure skaters. Give it a good old spin. Oh, give it a good old spin. There we go. A little bit better than my first spin. And what happens is the spinning force causes the balls to go outwards, right? They want to go outwards. And since these are lovely ramps, they're going to go out and up and stay on the edges. So that is our answer to highball. All right. Now, before I sign off, I want to uh, say thank you guys for joining us here at Mosey with all our puzzles. Like I said at the beginning, it's very, very important that you stay sharp and keep your mind active. And uh, we can't wait for you guys to try out some of these puzzles. I've intentionally skipped over certain puzzles because we want you to give it a shot when you're able to come back to the museum. Uh, as an incentive, when you, everything is over, um, we actually are doing a promotion where you get uh, reduced memberships. And that's actually a plus because you also get a discount for some of our wonderful summer camp programs. Do we have any questions? No questions. Great. Well, in that case, I'm going to go ahead and say thank you so much. Uh, thanks for tuning in and keep discovering. Bye, guys.